All right, in this video, I'm going to do uh, yet another derivative of inverse trig functions. This should be number three. Um, and I'm going to do, hopefully, one that's a little bit harder. Okay, so I'm going to do now the derivative of arcsine of cosine x um, divided by 1 plus sine x. Again, we're going to have to use the chain rule on this one. So, you might want to jot down that formula from the beginning. It says the derivative of arc sine. Um, it says you get basically 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever's next to the cos or excuse me, the arc sine part, which is all of this stuff. So we'll get cosine x over 1 plus sine x. And this is all going to be squared. And then we actually have to multiply that by the derivative. So we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside stuff, cosine x over 1 plus sine x using the chain rule. Okay, so that's why that part comes along. All right, well, this is where it just turns into, so we still have to take the derivative of this part, and we're going to have some algebra fun with the first part. Um, this, is, this is the fun part of calculus. Um, they basically just all turn into big algebra problems and trig problems at the end. So I'm going to square the top, and we would get cosine squared x. I'm going to leave the bottom part alone, 1 plus sine x quantity squared. Okay, and we'll just see what happens here. Um, okay, so I still have to multiply this by the derivative of um, cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x, so we have to use the quotient rule on that. So it says we get the bottom, so 1 plus sine x times the derivative of the top, which will be negative sine x minus the top part, which is cosine x, times the derivative of the bottom part, make my x a little bigger, um, times the derivative of the bottom part, which is going to be another cosine x. Okay, the 1 just goes away. And then this is all over 1 plus sine x quantity squared. Okay, I haven't worked this one out yet, but it looks like we're going to get common denominators. I'm sure some stuff's going to probably um, factor and cancel and simplify down nicely. All right, so underneath my square root, I think I am going to do what I just said. I'm going to get common denominators. So that means I would have to multiply the fraction by 1 plus sine x squared. And then there would still be a minus sign in there over 1 plus sine x squared. So I'm just kind of squeezing it in there. So that would give me the denominator of 1 plus sine x quantity squared. On the top, I would have 1 plus sine x quantity squared minus cosine squared x. Okay, and this would still all be under 1, so I'm going to erase this step now. So this would still all be over 1. And now on our right side, let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to distribute out. We'll get negative sine x times 1, or negative sine x. It looks like we'll get a negative sine squared x term. And then we have a minus cosine squared x term. And again, this is all being divided by 1 plus sine x quantity squared. All right, um, we're having fun. So let me erase the top part, because I'm going to go back up here. OK, so try to give myself a little more space. So it says we get 1 over, I'm still not sure if I want to expand this out on top or not. I think, I think we probably should. So if you FOIL it out, we'll get 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x. And then that'll all be, we still have to subtract off the cosine squared x. We still have this denominator of 1 plus um, sine x quantity squared. Again, we can take the square root of the top and the bottom here in a second. Okay, so, whoops, my top part of my fraction got cut off there, sorry. Um, so then we're going to multiply that. So we have negative sine x. Notice out of this part, the negative sine squared minus cosine squared, we could actually factor out the negative. We would have sine squared plus cosine squared x left over. But remember sine squared plus cosine squared. Okay, again, I'm just factoring the negative out of the top part. That's equivalent to 1. 
So really we'll get negative sine x minus 1. Again, all over 1 plus sine x quantity squared. So let's see if we simplify. So on the first part, remember if you have stuff underneath the square root of fraction, you can take the square root of the top and you can take the square root of the bottom. Well, if we take the square root of the bottom, we're going to get 1 over the square root. There's really not a lot that I see to do with the top part. We can't factor out a negative and use this trick. Um, maybe we could replace this, the cosine squared, but so this should be 2 sine x instead of sine squared x. So 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared. I got ahead of myself. So we would have 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x minus cosine squared x and then that would be being divided by 1 plus sine x after I take the square root of it. Okay, so there's my big original fraction. If I have 1 over a fraction, the only effect that really does is it has, it flips the fraction in the denominator. So this 1 plus sine x that was in the denominator will actually just get moved to the numerator after I flip it. Okay, and then still we have this negative sine x minus 1 over 1 plus sine squared, excuse me, sine x squared. Well, at this point, we have a 1 plus sine x on top. We have a 1 plus sine x on the bottom. I would cancel out the 1 on top with 1 on the bottom. So it looks like we're left with on top. You could factor out the negative 1, and you'd have sine x plus 1. And then that would all be getting divided by 1 plus 2 sine x um, plus sine squared x minus cosine squared x. So maybe we should have just left that. Um, maybe we shouldn't have even have to multiply that out. I don't see what really good it did, but oh well. And then we still have the 1 plus sine x, the, remain, the remaining one in the denominator. All right, well, hey, now look, we've got a 1 plus sine x and a 1 plus sine x. Um, so we can actually cancel out yet another one. And it looks like we're just going to be left with negative 1 and that's going to get all divided by this original square root. Um, you could use a trig identity on cosine squared and put it all in terms of sine squared and condense it a little bit more, but I don't feel like doing that. So um, again, I don't see, you know, it would be maybe look a little bit better, but I don't see any great, you know, I guess maybe the ones would cancel out. Um, well, actually, let's do it. Um, we should do it. So I'm being lazy. That's not a good example at all, is it? So um, that I mean, me being a bad example. So sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. So that means if we solve for cosine squared, we get cosine squared x equals one minus sine squared x. Okay. So that means if I plug that into the denominator minus cosine squared x, I'm going to get minus 1 minus sine squared x, all underneath the square root. So if we plug that in now, we have negative 1, all divided by, okay, so notice if I distribute the negative, I'm going to get minus 1, and the negative will turn into a positive on the sine squared. So it actually looks like the minus 1 and the minus 1 cancel, and then we'll have a 2 sine x underneath the square root. We have a positive sine squared and a positive sine squared. That looks like positive 2 sine squared x to me. You could factor out a 2 sine x. You'd have 1 plus sine x left. But again, I don't see how anything else would cancel. So um, barring the, the, the likelihood that I made a, a mistake here, which is possible, this looks to me like it should be the derivative. So I hope this helps. This is definitely the worst one of the bunch. If you want to see an easier couple, um, dig around. They should be close by.